So what's actually going on inside a loudspeaker in order for it to reproduce your favourite music? Hello YouTube, welcome to Big Hairy Audio. So I'm a front of house engineer, I mix live shows, I'm lucky enough to work with artists such as Arlo Parks, Island, Club Kuru, Eliza Shaddad. My real specialist subject is loudspeakers. I love loudspeakers, whether huge loudspeakers at shows or just the typical bookshelf loudspeakers that you'll find at home. So I've decided to put together some YouTube videos in order to teach you guys something about loudspeakers. You might even learn something. Let's start by talking about the basics of a loudspeaker. A loudspeaker comprises of three main parts, the driver, the cabinet, and the crossover. The loudspeaker driver is built up from a number of different components. Let's start by focusing on the diaphragm, the voice coil, and the magnet. This animation shows a breakdown of what's going on inside the driver in order to make the cone move. As you can see from the image, there are two electronic terminals to connect a power amplifier to the driver. These terminals then connect to the voice coil. The voltage sent by the power amplifier to the voice coil creates an electromagnetic force which pushes and pulls the voice coil from the magnet. The voice coil is glued to the spider and the cone. The cone is stiff in order to create air pressure fluctuations, whilst the spider and surround are flexible in order to minimize cone distortion. The air pressure fluctuations are called sound pressure level, or SPL for short. These are measured in decibels, or dBs. Each production driver comes with a frequency response plot, like this one. The plot shows the SPL that the driver produces at each frequency whilst the input amplitude remains the same. Note that this bass driver rolls off under 100 Hz. And this is where the cabinet comes in. A speaker cabinet is the box that houses the drive units. The purpose of the cabinet is primarily to tune the frequency response of the bass driver. Cabinets are typically either sealed to keep the air in, or ported to extend the bass response. These ported cabinets are built by British manufacturer ATC. This computer software is able to simulate the frequency response of a driver in different sized cabinets. The sage colored line is a sealed cabinet. Note that it rolls off the earliest, but the roll off is smooth. The red and green lines are both ported cabinets. They have steeper roll offs but provide a wider, usable SPL. Another example of a ported design is an advanced transmission line cabinet by PMC loudspeakers. These loudspeakers use the SPL from the rear of the drivers and tune that SPL by sending it down a line inside the cabinet. The transmission line is treated with acoustic grade foam of varying depths in order to absorb unwanted frequencies. This means that what leaves the vent at the end of the line is tuned and also time delayed by the line length. This allows the designer to play with the tone and phase of the rear of the driver. Finally we have the crossover. A crossover network is typically an electronic network of filters made up of inductors, capacitors, and resistors. The function of these filters is to split up the audio spectrum into different frequency bands. So for example, here we have a three-way loudspeaker. Therefore, the crossover network needs to split the audio into highs, mids, and lows. Crossovers can be passive or active. A passive crossover comes after the power amplifier. An active crossover works at line level 
and requires an amp for each frequency band. That's the end of our introduction to loudspeaker systems. The first lecture in this series is called The Problem with Loudspeakers and dives deep into our requirements from a loudspeaker. See you then.